Hello and welcome. You are watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church located in Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. We pray that you would have an open mind and ears to hear what God would say to you today. So let's dive right in to one of Pastor Scott's or Pastor Michelle's previous teachings taught at Forgiven Church. Enjoy. All right, you guys ready for the Word of God? All right, go ahead and grab your Bibles, your iPhones, whatever your Bible's on. Hold them up high. Repeat after me. So this is my Bible. And I believe it was written for me to understand and agree with. I am what it says I am. Set free from all the power of the enemy. I will do what it says to do. And I will see that it is reality. Amen. All right, high five your neighbor on the way down. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Good to see you. Love y'all. Love y'all. Group hug. Group hug. Group hug. It's good to see you guys. Uh, I tell you, I'm ready for spring though. You know, I don't mind snow as long as there's a mountain that I can ski on. But uh, uh, for the first time in my life, I'm about ready for spring. That is for sure. So, very good. I uh, just want, also want to encourage everybody. Uh, Merlin, did you, bring, did you bring some of the new invites and all that stuff over? Or is that still over in the office? Oh, it's still over in the office. Okay, well, I guess we'll have that for you guys on Wednesday. But we do have new uh, business cards, new this, new that, with all of our name on it and everything else. Um, and uh, we do have uh, welcome packets on the way also, new welcome packets and all that stuff. So uh, a few things we are going to finish up uh, as we're going through this name change and everything else. So we do have some things that we're going to be changing. Got to change the color of the pulpit and all that stuff because it really doesn't match. So work with us as we're getting, um, we're not clashing. I guess we'll put it that way. So uh, we're going to be doing that. So uh, turn with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And of course... Last week, we began the theme for this year, talking about forgiveness. And uh, for those of you that have been with us for a while, anytime I do something that takes a little while, I like doing a quick review, try to do a quick review. But reviewing is very important, right? Because repetition causes what? Revelation. Right. Repetition causes revelation. And so we have got to get a revelation of the forgiveness of God because we talked about this last week. I think so many of us take the forgiveness of God for granted. And it shows in the uh, fruit or the lack of fruit in our lives. Uh, so look at here again in verse 7. Romans 4 verse 7 says this. Blessed are they whose transgressions are what? Forgiven, whose sins are covered, blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. But he said that word blessed again means this that means supremely blessed, by extension, fortunate, well off, kind of like that couple. Yeah. Right? My wife was talking about what, what Uncle, Uncle who? Leroy. Uncle Leroy and Chloe, right? Clovey, sorry about that, Clovey, they're well off. They're well off, you know, and, and, and the thing about it is, it's not, he's not, he is forgiven. The only problem is he hadn't received that forgiveness yet. Right. And it says, he says this, he goes, well off and happy, right? See, when you run into a lot of believers, it makes me wonder what they're believing about because they've got frowns on their faces like everybody else does. There are people in the world, like who my wife was talking about, that seem to be more happy than people who are forgiven. forgiven, right? People who are saved. And he says this, he says, blessed or happy are they whose transgressions, that word transgressions means the violation of law or wickedness or unrighteousness, whose transgressions are forgiven. This is what that word forgiven means again. It means to send forth, to send away, to remit. And to remit means to forgive or pardon or to refrain from enacting a payment. When you enact something, that means you put a strong demand on. If you were in, in, in uh, whatever with the mafia, you did a deal with the mafia and you didn't uh, pay up, they would send people to enact what was due to them. Okay? 
And here he says, that's not happening to you. And he also says this, it means to refrain from inflicting punishment. It also means to omit, which means to leave out or fail to include on purpose. Wow. When you, when you think of everything like that, it makes us appreciate being forgiven so much more. So he says, blessed are they whose transgressions are what? Forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him. And basically the definition of sin is missing the mark, right? When you sin, you miss the mark of God's standard, right? Because God does have a standard. Would you guys agree with that? Okay, who's our example? Jesus is our example. He is our standard. Which means we can get there someday. Okay? It may not be tomorrow, may not be next week, may not be next month. But the Bible says that we are supposed to be conformed or transformed into the image and likeness of Jesus. He is our standard. But when we sin or we miss the mark, it's not going to be held against us. Because we're forgiven. Now, as we talked about last week, this does not give you a license to sin. Though some people use it for that. People that take the extreme grace message for that. Okay? I love grace. We are saved by grace through faith. But there are some people that have the extreme grace where they think, well, no matter what, because I'm forgiven, I can live like the devil and I'm still in and it's all good. No, no, that's not the way it works. We still have to give an account before the Lord. The Bible says for the good and the bad while done in the body. We still got to give an account. It's just not going to be held against you and keep you out. So we still have to give an account, but it's not going to keep you out. Are, are you with me on this? Are you, can you feel me? Are we good? Are we good? All right, we all good. Right? Oh, you, oh, I'm sorry, my bad. I missed that. All right, I'm not going to butt. All right. So happy of this. Look at a couple other translations. Let's go through this really quick. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Next translation in the message. Fortunate those whose crimes are carted off, whose sins are wiped clean from the slate. Fortunate the person against whom the Lord does not keep score. Because we'd never win. We'd never win. If you ever try to go against God, you will always lose. We'll always lose. But see, the thing about it is, is because we are forgiven, then we're always on the winning side. He doesn't keep score because we're no longer his enemies. Remember, we, we are reconciled. And reconciliation means what? To, to turn from an enemy now to a friend because the price has been paid. It's very important. You got the Amplified back there? says this, blessed and what? Happy. Blessed and what? Happy. So hopefully you guys were smiling all this week, right? People shouldn't be inviting you to church because you're always down and out, right? Boy, I tell you that, yeah, I tell you that Merlin Troyer, boy, I don't know what it is about that guy, but I think I need to invite him to church because he's always down and out and he's always got a frown on his face and I think he just needs to meet Jesus. If somebody invites you to church, you're missing something. Because we should be happy. People ought to be looking at you and say, what is it about you? Why are you always smiling? Why are you always, because I'm not on my way to hell. My sins are forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, but look what's going on around you. This and that and this and that. Yeah, but it could be worse. It could always be worse. Right? It could always be worse. So we should always be blessed, understand that, and happy, and to be envied. Okay? Now, I'm not pointing fingers. Don't be nudging. Don't be shoving. Don't nothing. But there are some believers, I do not envy them. I look at their life and I go, man, if that's what it's like to be a Christian, I don't want any part of it. Man, you're so down and out, so bum, broken, busted, and disgusted, and more depressed than people who don't serve Jesus. If this is what it means to serve Jesus, I don't want any part of that. I don't envy any of that. No, I want, I want, I want, to, I want to be a person that people envy not for prideful reasons but that when they go what is it what is it about you? I mean, it's like things always happen for you 
favor always happens for you. What's going on? What, what happened? And I can lead them right to Jesus. I can say, this is why. This is why. This is why. Right? Very important. He says this. He said, envied are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered up and completely buried. Blessed and happy and to be envied is the person of whose sin the Lord will take no account nor reckoning it against him. All right? Go with me over, if you would, to not uh, Luke chapter 4. Just put that on the screen so we can get through this real quick. Luke chapter, or Luke chapter 7, sorry, Luke chapter 7, verse 44. This, we talked about this a little bit last week, but this is so important. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. Then he turned toward the... Or, whoops. You got the next? There, thank you. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Thank you. How you doing back there? Thank God. Amen. Here we go. There, oh, I just want to make sure she's all good. All right, your, hands are, your hands cold? No, you're good. All right. <laughs> Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been what? Forgiven, for she what? Loved much. But he who has been forgiven little loves little. See, last week we were really talking about this happened to do with the people who owed Daenerys or money, right? One owed 50 and the other one owed 500. But, if, but remember, the one who lent them the money forgave both the debts, right? And, see the, and he says here, Jesus is saying, you know, there are people that are really ungrateful. Yeah. Yeah. They're very ungrateful for the forgiveness. And because they're so ungrateful, it shows in their actions. But see, people who are so thankful for their forgiveness, those are people that are really, 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 really committed. As I was mentioning last week, my wife and I, the reason why we are the way we are, and, and I'm not saying we're any better than anybody, so that don't, I'm not, but I'm just saying, why are we so committed? Why do we, and this is before we ever were in the ministry. We were very committed before we were ever in the ministry. It's because, man, we were so thankful for what he did for our lives. What, what else can I do but give you my life? You gave me yours. I, I want to offer mine to you. And, and if the Bible says I got to go to church, then I'm not going to forsake the sin of the saints. If the Bible says I'm supposed to return tithes and offerings and serve and, and do this and do that, then I'm going to do that. What else can I do? Because, see, you know, we'll get into this a little bit later, but, you know, Jesus does say, why do, you, why do you say I'm your friend but you don't do what I tell you to do? Well, I want to be known as his friend, right? A lot of people out there singing that song, I am a friend of God, right? You know that song? It's all, everybody loves it on the radio. I am a friend, of, but they don't serve. They don't give. They barely attend church. They, oh, but I love Jesus. Oh, okay. See, and he's sitting there saying, look at everything she's doing. She's got an understanding about what's going on. And see, sometimes I think some of us has, have for, forgotten how much we've been forgiven. Yeah. See, and, and some of the people that really struggle with that are those who grew up in church. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and they want them big testimonies. They want them huge testimonies. Man, oh man I, I really can't reach anybody because all I did is grow up in church and I sinned just a little bit. I just sinned just a little bit. And they're just kind of mediocre kind of people. And, they, you know, and they're like, I wish I had a testimony like so-and-so over there. I mean, they killed people. They did this. They did that. They did that. And now they're saved. And, man, they can witness to people. No, you know what the biggest witness is? Man, you didn't go through all that stuff because you had a revelation of it when you were young. That is a testimony. That is a testimony. See, and, and, and don't use this. You know everybody has that excuse. Well, everybody's got to sow their oats. Everybody's got to go out and test them waters. No, they don't. Because see, when you understand that you're forgiven, you've got a relationship with the Lord, yeah. and you understand that one little lie will send you to hell, you'll be thankful. And you ought to be just as thankful. Now, I know the Bible says that, but some people just know, know it more, right? You ought to be just as thankful as somebody who's a murderer. Somebody who's done this and done that and done this and done that. You ought to be just as thankful to them because you're not on your way to hell. You're all forgiven, right? And so no matter how many sins you've ever committed, how big or how small, 
What I'm saying is, is if you are so thankful, it ought to show in your actions. There ought to be fruit. If you love somebody, you're going to do something to make them happy. Amen. Right? Now I try to do things for my wife to make her happy. Right? She calls me up and says, honey, honey, I just, honey. <laughs> All right. Why? Because I love her. Even when I don't want to do it, I still want to do it because I want to make her happy. Right? And Jesus is saying the exact same thing on there. It's very, very important that we get this. So uh, can you put the message translation on there? Nestor's translation says this. Then turning to the woman, but speaking to Simon, he said, Do you see this woman? I came to your home. You provided no water for my feet, but she rained tears on my feet and dried them with her hair. You gave me no greeting, but from the time I arrived, she hasn't quit kissing my feet. You provided nothing for freshening up, but she has soothed my feet with perfume. Impressive, isn't it? She was forgiven many, many sins, and so she is very, very grateful. If the forgiveness is minimal, the gratitude is minimal. Right? See, I think that kind of just weighs down on everything. Are you really thankful that you're forgiven? Because if you are it will show. Yes. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful amen, loud amen, preach it, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Pat, right? Amen, come on. This is so important. See, when, when the majority of the body of Christ has got the 80-20 thing going on, sitting and doing nothing, and only 20% of the people are really doing something for Jesus, and I'm talking about the church in general, it seems to me like 80% are not very grateful. Or they're taking it for granted. That was free for whoever needed that. Luke chapter 24 says this. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. This is Jesus right before he ascended. Luke 24, 45 says this. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And, everybody say, and and repentance everybody say repentance. repentance and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem okay see a lot of people that they, they talk about the forgiveness but they don't add the repentance part what is repentance it's turning and going the other way that you used to be going okay don't tell me that you've been serving Jesus for 10 years and your life isn't any different than it was. Oh, yeah, I'm forgiven. Sure, I'm forgiven. But I can't tell. Repentance and forgiveness. See, when you understand that you're forgiven, your life should change. I'm on the wrong side. Even though there's more people over there, I'm on the wrong side. I say, when you understand that you're forgiven, your life should change. Amen. All right, you, all right, I'm going to stay over here. You guys got this. It's important. Don't tell me you're a Christian and live like the world. Don't be doing that. Too many people, they're looking for the real deal. They're looking for real stuff. And see, people ought to know that you're forgiven, not because you say that you are, because of how you're living your life. Because you're living a repentive life. I'm not doing the things that I used to do because I don't want to. Why would you want to? You're forgiven. Why would you want to do something contrary or opposite on purpose than what Jesus tells you to do? I'm sorry, but, you know, people that go up and they, they win awards. You know, they win awards about singing about smutting and this and drugging and shooting and killing and all that stuff. I just like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus. And they got all this bling hanging from their neck, about eight crosses. I don't, I don't know if that's conviction or something, maybe helping them out, but don't be up there. I like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus, and you talking about all this, singing about all this stuff, and, you know, and doing the booty dance while you're, you know, on your music videos. That just doesn't work. It doesn't. Oh, I'm just being a witness. Yeah, you are. Oh, God's given me a talent. Oh, yeah, he has. I just want to thank Jesus. What are you doing? What are you talking about? You're supposed to live a repentive life. If I didn't know you say thank you, Jesus, love you, I'd think you're on your way to hell. By the way, you acting. 
Oh, is this too tough for everybody? Sorry, sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Y'all, y'all good with me over this? All right. Your wife's about to bust, dude, man. You better help her out over there. <laughs> is it not true? He says repentance and forgiveness of sins. Yeah. So thank God we're forgiven, but then your life ought to show it. Amen. That we've got a revelation. Because when you've got a revelation, it will make you move. Right? Amen. And not just head knowledge, but when you have a revelation, it's heart knowledge. When you got it down here, then all of a sudden you start acting upon this. Amen. Good? We all good with that? All right, let's look at something new here. Matthew chapter 6. That was probably really sad, huh? Pastor grinding in the pull up front of Bill. I tell you. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Gosh. All right. Here we go. Matthew 6, are you there? Are you there? All right, here it is. Matthew 6, 14 says this. For if, everybody say if. if. For if you forgive men when they sin against you. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, everybody say but. But, but if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Okay, let's all do it. Let's all do it together. I, 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 everybody just gulp together. Oh. See, people don't like hearing this scripture, do they? Let's read, let's read it again. For if, which means it's conditional. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But... If you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Who said this? Jesus said this. So it's pretty important. How many guys would say this is pretty important? But yet there are there, there unbelievers all over the place. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know what they did. I could never forgive them. I would never forgive them. You don't know what they did. I don't need to know what they did. You know, do you ever notice, I don't see anywhere in Scripture where Jesus says, if you feel like forgiving them, forgive them. Or when the time is right. Or after that bitterness has just lingered long enough. When what? Or yeah, when he's dealt with you long enough. Right, whatever. Nowhere does the Bible say that. He says, forgive. Period. Forgive. Well, I can't forgive. Then get saved, and you can. Because when you get saved, then you've got self-control. Then you've got the love of God. Then you can forgive. Well, I am saved. Well, not when you say you can't forgive. Because he can't is a four-letter word to a Christian. Because the Bible says, I can do all things, including forgive people who treated you wrong. Now, is there anybody in here besides myself and my wife that's ever been stabbed in the back? Okay, the rest of you need to just repent. <laughs> or are you the one doing all the stabbing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, all right. See, see the problem is, you know what makes it really tough? Is, 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 is it like, it's like we talked about this before. When, when a sinner sins, that's what they do. Because yeah. either you're a sinner or you're a saint. You're not both. I'm just the same old sinner, saved by grace. You better hope not get on your way to hell then. No, you are a saint. Yeah, that's right. That might happen to sin. That's right. But you're not the same old sinner. You're not refurbished. Amen. Right? You're brand new. Amen. Right? Yeah. But it, that when it gets tough is when someone claims to be a believer and they're the one stabbing you in the back. That's when it gets tough. That's when you need that supernatural dose of forgiveness. Yeah. 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 Preach it. Come on, Pastor. Oh, come on. I can feel that one. Oh, yeah. Right, don't be nudging nobody. Yeah, yeah. Remember how you were t- we were talking about so and so? Yeah, remember we were saying about. Remember we were that's gossip. That's bad too. Don't be doing that. <laughs> but it's all rampant through the body of Christ. He would never tell you to do something you couldn't do. Yeah. If you claim to be a believer, you can forgive. Yeah. Very, very important. New Living Translation says this. 
If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse, which means it's a choice, to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Next translation. In prayer, there is a connection between what God does and what you do. You can't get forgiveness from God, for instance, without also forgiving others. If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part. How many of you guys know this will preach? How many of you guys would say this will preach? All right. But you know what? That's not what we should be preaching. It's, but it's Bible. It is. It is. But let me show you something. The, a revelation the Lord was showing. Because I, I'm, I like this too. I'm like, that's right. You know, my kids come up to me. And you know what I used to tell them? I don't tell them this no more, but I, I've told them this before. They'll screw up. They'll disobey. They not do their dishes. They not do their chores. They not, because I've asked them to do it and they don't do it or whatever. Right now. And then when they finally have conviction come upon their life, right? Not condemnation, but conviction. They come up, Dad, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? And, you know, because of this scripture, I'd be like, yeah, I'm forgiving you. You ain't worth me going to hell over. Yeah, I'm going to forgive you, so I'm be forgiven. Don't, don't look at me all righteous like that. Right? How many of you guys ever had this thought? Yeah, I better forgive so I can be forgiven. Right? All, all the rest, you got the revelation, everything. All, all right, okay, here we go. Look at me in Ephesians chapter 4, though. Can I show you this? Can I show you this? I'm going to show you anyways. Would you like it or not? I'm going to show it to you. Look at the difference here. Look at this. Ephesians 4. So he said, if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. That's important. Jesus said it. Ephesians 4, look at this. Verse 29, it says this. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of mouth. Do you notice he told you to get rid of that? He said, get rid of it. Everybody say, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Shove your neighbor say, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Shove your other neighbor so they understand. Get rid of it. Right? Did everybody get shoved? Did you get shoved back there? All right, you just got shoved. All right, I want you everybody to get shoved. You need to get rid of it. See, these people that come up, God delivered me from the spirit of anger. No, it's just a flesh problem. You know, I've never heard somebody came up and said, God delivered me from the spirit of slander. Because it's all in the same category. You know what slander is? Degrading people, cutting them down, uh, messing their name up, slandering people, right? You don't hear people say, God delivered me from the spirit of slander, do they? But they always say, oh, the spirit of anger, the spirit of rage, the spirit... No, nah, come on, man, it's a flesh problem. You get rid of it. Quit giving the devil credit. You just got a problem. You, you just missing some self-control. You got it, you've saved, Right? Is if you're saved, you can stop, not be mad. You can make a choice. Right. right? Well, I can't help it to get saved, and you can. He gives it to you. He gives you the fruit, right? But here he says this. He, he says this. Verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God, what? Forgave, Forgave you. See the difference? Simulator. No. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. He said, if you want to be forgiven, then you better forgive. Before the cross. After the cross, he said, because you are already forgiven, now you ought to forgive others. Do you see the difference? Before the cross is, if you want to be forgiven, you better forgive others. It's a works mentality. It's part of what? The law, right? Isn't that what we were trying to do before the cross? Well, not us, because but before the cross, it was all law, law-based, right? Works, 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 works. If you want to be forgiven, you better forgive. 
But now, we, you take everything and everything's got to wash through the cross. Is that right? Well, when you wash every, the Old Testament through the cross, either the cross keeps things the same, it nullifies things, or it improves things. Right? Question. Have we always served Jehovah Rapha? Jehovah Rapha? Well, not always, but I'm just talking about, okay, has he always been our healer? Okay, let me rephrase that. Yeah, no, we haven't always been saved. Old Testament, New Testament, has he always been our healer? That didn't change when you put it through the cross. Jesus didn't wipe healing out, contrary to what so many people think. Healing but done away with, no, it hasn't. He healed us yesterday, today, and forever. You put it through the cross, he is still the healer. Right? Right? Sacrifices. Old Testament, they used to sacrifice. Do we sacrifice anymore? No, because there is one true sacrifice. He wiped away sacrifices. Right? But now when it comes to forgiveness, look what's switched. Instead of us saying, okay, we're going to forgive you so we make sure we make it to heaven. Now, it's because we're on our way to heaven, we're going to forgive you. Do you see the difference? In forgiveness, there's been a switch. That is good, if you get that. Very, very, very life-changing if you understand the difference. Because I already am, because I'm already so grateful, who am I not to forgive you? See, before it used to be, well, absolutely, I'm going to forgive you so I don't go to hell. And now, because I'm not going to hell, and I'm not getting what I deserve, I'm not going to give you what you deserve. So when you want to hit somebody with a bat, you put the bat down. I've never thought about ever hitting it. Whether you want to slap somebody, punch them, hit them in the back, take them in a UFC match, whatever you want to do. I know y'all right. Y'all came out of the womb, never had a bad thought in your life. Okay, I, I admit, I struggle every now and then. I do. I, so who else struggles? Uh, okay. See, the problem, not everybody raised their hands. Uh, I don't know. I never have. Oh, yeah, man, I never. Oh, this is the church, man. I tell you, that's... Man, I'm not perfect, but I am forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. And every now and then, I have a rough thought. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Says, I do. I do. But that's, that's not God. That's flesh. Yeah, right. But what, I, what do I remember? Because I'm forgiven, hey. now I'm going to forgive you. Because I'm forgiven, I'm going to do all these other things. I'm going to be kind. Amen. Yeah. Ooh, kind Christians. <laughs> I'm going to be kind and compassionate to one another because that's the way God was towards us. Do you guys see the difference? When it comes to forgiveness, wow, what a change the cross has made. It's nothing by what you've done. You didn't earn it. It's because you freely received it. And, and, and what tense is this again? Verse 32, he goes, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you, what tense is that? That's past tense. It's not, will he forgive me? Will he forgive me? No, he already did. Remember, when he was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. He wasn't just talking about those, the ones that nailed him to the cross. He was even talking about you and me 2,000 years later. Father, forgive them. And he said, okay, it's enough. See, if we still deal with condemnation, Guilt, we have a hard time coming boldly before the throne of grace, like he said that we're supposed to. If we still, then we do not understand the power that's in the blood. The power in the blood is strong enough for past, present, and future, ten, future sins. Yeah. Right? Very important, very important. Look over 1 John 1. 1 John 1. 1 John 1. Hallelujah. He says this. 1 John 1, 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If, everybody say if. If, if we confess our sins, he is, present tense, faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Why? Because it's already a settled issue. 
It's already a settled issue. Now, there are people that are, that are, are way off that don't apply the scripture to their lives. They, they think because they are forgiven, they never need to confess their sins anymore to God. You do. You still need to stay accountable. You do, because he said to do what? Why do we need to stay accountable? He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful, present tense, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Right? He didn't say he's going to forgive you because you are now unrighteous. He said he's going he's to cleanse us from all unrighteousness or forgive us from all unrighteousness. What's the unrighteous? It's the dirty stuff. Right? Because when you got saved, when you received your forgiveness, he then declared you what? Righteous. righteous. You are now right standing for me. You are in right standing, right standing, right standing. Nothing by what you did. You didn't earn it. You're now in right standing before me. But when we miss the mark, when we get some sin on us, we want to kind of cleanse it, get rid of it. You know what I'm saying? See, so there's some people like myself, I like washing my hands. Yeah. I do. I, I do. I like washing my hands, especially after everybody's been coughing in their hands all day long. Hi, <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, thank you, Jesus. I'm not receiving nothing, but I like to wash my hands anyways. Yeah. I, I, I'm just that kind of, I kind of like clean. I kind of, that's just me. See, when you sin, it's there. It's there. And the only way to get rid of it is you got to talk. Father, I messed up, and you know I messed up. And so I thank you because you are forgiving God. I know you will forgive me. I got some, some sin right here. And I know the longer it's not dealt with, it's going to start to stink. So I just like just take a bath and just be all clean again. Absolutely. Because how many of you guys know when people don't shower after a while, they start to stink? Yeah. It's kind of like that with people who are Christians that keep sinning all the time and don't make it right. Yeah. You're still righteous. You're just stinky. Yeah. And I don't like stinky people. I like people who smell better. Right? Right? We like people who smell good, right? We like people that can raise their hand because they're sure. Because they're clean. Right? It's a settled issue. See, that's why it's so easy now to go before God if you understand forgiveness. Yeah. It is so easy to come boldly before him and say, I did this, I did this, I did this. And he'd be like, I know, I know, I know. But because I'm, I'm making it right, because we're discussing this thing and keeping the communication going, whew, and then when you're done, guess what do you do? You walk away like it never happened. Because it's not there no more. Yeah. And you're, now, now, some people won't like this. I don't care. It's the truth anyhow. Yeah. When you confess your sins and you're cleansed from all unrighteousness, you should walk around like you never sinned. Yeah. I know people, that, then you're just, no, no. I'm not saying I never sinned, but I'm saying now I've made it right before God again, and now I need to go back with my head up high and my shoulders back like it never ever happened. Because I don't stink no more. I'm clean. I'm good. Very important. Very important. See, a lot of people, they, they, would, they would read this scripture and they'd confess their sins so they'd be saved again. They think they lost their salvation because they sinned. No, man. You ever heard of this thing called mercy? What, what's mercy? It's, it's extending out there so you're not going to get what you're going to get, what, what, you could, what you could get if you don't stop. You know, I mean, there, there's people out there, they, te they teach doctrines of devils out there, man. They, they out there, they, you in, you're in church and everything's good, but if you cuss on the way out and you get in a car wreck and you die, you die 20 minutes after church and you cuss and you didn't repent, you're going to hell. No, you're not. You're still going to heaven. Okay, I know some people, don't, they don't believe it, but yeah, there's some people that teach that stuff. They, they, they do. They teach that stuff. If you, you, that once, it's, nah, man. He, he gives you time. He works on you. But see, the thing about it is, is once you sin, the, the stronger your relationship is with the Lord, you ought to know that you did. Yeah. And when ought to you to repent and ask for forgiveness? When? 
Immediately. That's good. Tell your neighbor immediately. immediately. When you know you sin, make it right. Amen. Why dwell on it? Because we have people that go, well, I don't want to tell him. I just don't want to tell him. I just, he's going to be so disappointed with me. I just don't want to tell him. I mean, he, man, I let him down last week, and, and I let him down yesterday, and this morning I really let him down. I don't want to tell him again. I just, man, I just, I just need to just, just deal with it right now. And when I'm ready, I'm going to tell him. When you tell him is not when he finds out. So just deal with it. When you're like, oh, just missed the, oh, man, I just sit. Father, man, you saw it. I know you saw it. <laughs> it's all right. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'll do better next time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know you will. I believe in you. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's good. That gets me excited. That, that almost makes me want to shout and dance and do the moonwalk. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's just, uh, I, I'm telling you, it's just, what? You prefer the moonwalk? Over the booty dance. All right. I probably would myself too. What do you mean? <laughs> Look over one chapter. We'll finish over here. Now, this, this, to me, this is just like, this scripture right here is just like a shouting scripture. I, I just get excited about this. But we're in 1 John 1, 9, right? So you cleanse from all unrighteousness. And then he says this in 1 John 2, 12. He says this, I write to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. Hallelujah! I write to you because your sins are forgiven. Not going to be. Not maybe. They are. Past tense. Write it. Write it. Write it. What are you going to write me? But let me just tell you why I'm writing you. Because your sins are forgiven. Oh, what do you got to tell me? And see, when you read this instruction manual, remember we talked about this a little bit last week. Boy, we were really going to get... That's the very beginning of everything. When you understand now that I'm forgiven, now that I'm righteous, now that I'm okay for God, it opens up everything else. Man, if I had a right to be healed before Old Testament, how much more now do I have a right to walk in divine health? If I had a right to prosper Old Testament, how much more do I have a right to prosper now? Above all things, I pray that you would prosper and be in health. Well, well, why can I do that? Because I'm forgiven. Right? It's just, man. When we understand that we got a right to this stuff now because he's not holding it against us, it really makes us receive those other things that come. All those other benefits of Christianity. But remember, remember what he said in, in, in Luke. He, remember when all the disciples were sent out? And they went out and they cast out devils and they did this and all that other kind of stuff. And then they came back to Jesus. And what did they say? They were so excited. They were filled with joy, it said. It said, even the demons submit to us in your names. And he says, man, I've given you all authority in heaven and on earth. He says, nothing's going to harm you. But then he says, he goes, but don't rejoice that the spirits submit to you. He said, what? He said, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That's what you ought to be rejoicing about. That's what you ought to be happy about. But what is, what is it like, though? Nowadays, in church today, you got a healing line going on. You get a healing line going on, and a miracle takes place, and everybody rejoices. Right? Or some supernatural miracle, or some this, or some that. The greatest miracle that can ever exist is that you're born again. That is the biggest miracle. That is something you should never, 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 never forget about. See, when we, when we give an invitation call and somebody gives their life to Jesus, the Bible says all of heaven. Oh, all of heaven rejoice. It didn't, and the Bible doesn't say all of heaven rejoices when somebody gets healed. It doesn't say all of heaven rejoices when, when somebody gets their financial breakthrough or they get their deliverance or they get that. It says all of heaven rejoices when someone gets saved. Because they're forgiven. Yes. Man, he says this here. He goes, man, I write to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven 
on account of his name. Man, that it, man. Oh, I see. And I know what's going to happen today. It might happen with me just a little bit. I'm not quite sure. But you know, you know, there are going to be stadiums full today. It, there's going to be some, there's going to be a stadium full today in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. And when Peyton Manning scores a touchdown, they beat the Patriots today. I'm telling you, there's going to be. Come on now, come on now. See, we get excited about that, why don't we? Right, right, right. Sure, I cast you out in Jesus' name. You did, you know us. <laughs> he said, no. But you know what? Stadiums of people will get on their feet and shout for Peyton Manning. Woo! Peyton Manning, best quarterback ever. Best this. Well, I don't know if he is or not, but whatever it is. They will shout. They will jump up and down. They will do whatever because he won a game. Yeah. But then when it comes to church, complimentary clap. Praise the Lord. How are you? I'm blessed. You don't look blessed. I'm blessed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I am forgiven. I have been given a second chance. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. There's no condemnation. I mean, you can't even get your hands out of your pockets. And we'll be jumping up and down for a, for a football game. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, we ought to be rejoicing that our names are written in heaven, that we're not getting what we deserve. Right? You know what I mean? Man, man. Look at, New, look at New Living Translation. It says this. I'm writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. Look at the next translation. The message says this. I remind you in case you forgot because I've run into a lot of people I've wanted to invite to church, but I think they forgot. What did they forget? I remind you, my dear children, your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Why, why are we getting back to this? Because, man, it, it's the foundation of all things. All things, all things, all things, all things, all things. See, when you're forgiven, there's no condemnation. And see, even unbelievers know that. They do. That's one of the reasons why we changed the name of our church to what it is. It speaks both to the saint and to the sinner. Forgiven. Forgiven church. I wonder if uh, wonder if God would forgive me. He already has. I was talking with a pastor not too long ago. Wasn't getting into the name and all this other kind of stuff. But he was talking about when he was giving altar calls and, and, and his altar call had nothing to do with you're already forgiven. It's like you got to do this and you got to do this and you got to do this and you got to do this to be forgiven. And he goes, what do you think of that? I said, that's not the way I see it. He said, what do you mean that's not the way you see it? I said, the way I see it is you're already forgiven. He's not, he doesn't have to die again. He doesn't have to go through what he did again. He, it was once and for all, it's a settled issue. All we got to do is receive what he's already done. He, said, he says he desires for all people to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But what do we got to do? What is our part? Thank you. I receive it. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And when we know that, we gotta be what? Ought to be happy people. Ought to be happy people. If you're down and out, broken down, disgusted, all that other kind of stuff, maybe you need to do a self-examination. Do you remember you're not getting what you deserve? Just remember, I remind you, dear children. Your sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. How many of you guys are excited your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we magnify you. We glorify you. We do give you thanks and praise. We thank you that we are forgiven. I thank you for those people who have received their forgiveness. I thank you that we never, ever take for granted the price that has been paid for us. I thank you that we love you much because we understand what we have been forgiven of. 
And I thank you that we would share the truth with people. It's not what you got to do to get saved. It's that it's already been paid. It's already been done for you. All you got to do is receive it by faith. There's no sin too big that the price hasn't been paid. May we share that love with people. That it's not that if he or will he, but that he already has forgiven you. Just receive it. I thank you for people that are coming into our, our minds right now, thoughts of people that are coming into our minds right now that we can share this good news with. The good news of forgiveness that will be preached to all nations. And I thank you that because we are forgiven, we will live a forgiven life. We will live a repentive life. We will choose to walk in your ways and not the ways of the world. And I thank you that that is no price too big for us to pay because you ultimately paid the one true price for all people. So this day we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory in the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. And all of God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Give God a shout of praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Pastor Scott and Michelle, thank you for watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church, now in two locations, Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. Great things continue to happen at Forgiven Church, and we want to give you a special invite to attend one of our life-changing services. Whether you'll be attending church for the first time, haven't been to church in a long time, or maybe you're in transition for a new place to worship, we invite you to a place where we are not perfect, but we know that we are forgiven. For more information, you can go to our website at ForgivenOnline.org. Again, that is ForgivenOnline.org. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you at church.